Okay, just in case we have future golf cart videos, today is May the 13th. This is the day the acquisition of the golf cart was made. All right. All right, so what you're about to be looking at is what I believe to be a 1990 Easy Go golf cart. This uh, used to be a 36 volt golf cart, which means it had an electric motor. And uh, the plan is to gas power this one. Now I've scoured the internet. I've seen several different ways how to do it. Some of them I liked, some of them I didn't like, some of them I don't think will hold up long term. This one has got to hold up long term. So when I do this one, it's gonna be done and it's gonna be done right. So let's see what we're starting with. Starting with two flat tires on the front. The body looks really good. This one's old enough that the body's all metal. The dash looks good. The floor looks good. The brakes work. Now the electronics, they're shot. They're all pieced together. All I've done so far is take the motor off to get down to that. Now most of the time, um, everybody either welds a gear to that or uses the starter nose and welds to it. And I think we're going to do the latter. We're going to use the starter nose and weld to it. All of this old angle iron here that held the batteries up, it's all coming out. These frame rails right here, because they were down there around all that battery acid, they're a little bit eat up. But they're pretty thick. But we're going to strengthen them. We're going to build a platform off of the axle in the back. We're going to bring it up here to these frame rails. And they're going to hinge right here. It's not going to be hard mounted to it. It's just going to kind of set on it and make it where it can move a little bit. Because the body is separate from the rear end. So this is what we're starting with. So it's uh it's only about 1:30 in the afternoon and already 92 degrees. But before I get to cutting, I'm gonna do kind of a mid tear apart update. So the seats are off, the uh, middle panels off, those rubber pieces at the back they're off, golf club carriers off. By the way, if you work on one of these and it's old, that's made out of fiberglass, and if you rub up against it. You're going to, it's going to be like you've been putting in insulation all day long. Uh, for golf balls and the top off. Whew. You better believe with the sun beating down the way it does in Alabama, that top's going back on. So, this is what we got now. Just a huge mess. I'm going to hold this shot right here for a second. And um, that's what I'm about to clean up. By the way, I just checked the gear ratio. It seems to be about six and a quarter here to one turn of the wheel. So six and a quarter to one as far as I can tell. All right. Everything's ground loose. Cleaned up that front plate as good as I could without bothering bothering, wow, bothering the uh, throttle. Somehow we'll, we'll hook the engine throttle to that rod because that went to the speed control and the brake lines. And since the brake works, we definitely don't want to hurt those right now. So that's a future engine bay. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to try to show everything I'm doing because I'm building this for longevity and maybe it can be used as a how-to. So we have to hook our engine, our torque converter, everything to that splined shaft. The best way to hook to that is to use the old motor splined inside. So Look, I want everything to be mounted on a 5 8 shaft and a 5 8 shaft hooked to this right here on the back side. But to weld that perfect and get it centered is almost impossible 
with just standard stuff like we got. If you got a machine shop, it's easy. But without a machine shop. So, I went to cutting on the motor. Using my grinder right there. Got a cutting wheel on it. 16th inch cutting wheel. I first cut all the way through there. All the way down to here. And then, I came through here and cut some fins out. Once you start cutting fins out, you can get down to the metal shaft. So we're going to try to get down to the metal shaft and see what we got. Because, hey, it would be great to mount this onto that and just have this on pillow block bearings. And I'll show you what a pillow block bearing looks like here in a minute. Alright, so I'm going to keep chipping away at it and see what we got. Alright. So I got everything off of this side of the motor. That was pretty easy. You just cut all those uh, copper pieces, and that kind of breaks off. Alright. I cut this as deep as it would cut, and I couldn't get anywhere. I mean, I was hammering a, a chisel in there. So, I cut as deep as I could around the important piece, the nose, and then broke the rest off. So, here's the nose. 19 splines on the inside. I believe it's 19. That's what the internet said. I did not count them. And I cleaned the back up a little bit. Trued it up just a little. It needs trued up some more. Okay. I told y'all what a pillow block bearing was going to be used in this. This is a pillow block bearing. Now this is a great old big one. I built a winch years ago. And just to show y'all this, I took this off the winch. So the inside turns and it's got a way to mount it. All right, this is one half of a spider coupler. So you, you got this and another piece identical to it, and they fit together with rubber in between. Let me go show you the other, the other half. All right, this is an old project. Okay, you see that right there? That is the other half of the coupler. Let me wind it around to about right there. See, that angle's not going to work. It's going to be upside down. Okay, that fits on there just like that. And where these gaps are right here, a little spider goes in there. Now, this spider is all chewed up. It's supposed to be a little, uh, I think it's a six-sided star. So anyway, it's supposed to... Golly, it's hard to do things one-handed. It's supposed to fit in there something like that and then the coupler comes in something like that so where the gaps are you got a little piece of rubber there all right so that's how a spider coupler works all right so the plan is to have a 5 8 spider coupler 5 8 inside right there okay I'm going to weld this I'm gonna true it up as best as I can and I'm going to weld that to that. Okay? So then, imagine this slides on there. Spider coupler, half of it welded right there. Alright, then, that's where the pillow block bearings come in. Two 5 8 pillow block bearings. About, I may only need one. Because the bearings in here... Some guys are just running a sprocket right here with it unsupported over here. Well, I need this to last forever, so I'm not going to do that. Mine's going to be supported out here. So it may only be supported by one 5 8 pillow block bearing. So when I make an engine plate that will attach to the rear end, I'm just going to make a small platform that's got a pillow block bearing on it. 5 8 pillow block bearing. The reason I keep saying 5 8 is because... Um, so many gears have a 5 8 hole and you can just you uh, you can buy a what they call a hub it looks a lot like this but the gear just tacks on to it and uh, you can put that and you can interchange sprockets I'll be able to make this thing run faster slower whatever I needed to do just by pulling out a few set screws and changing out a gear or if I find a gear that I really like kind of a mid-range deal I can just tack weld it on there and it'll just be there but Right now, ow. the most important thing I need to do next 
is I probably need to take that to a chop saw and c cut it off clean. And I'm not, I'm not using these 5 8 couplers. These are going back on the winch. I'm going to mount it in the barn so I can pick up anything I may need to pick up. And then that's going on there. So now you may be asking why all that. Well, I want this thing to run perfect without vibration. So if I use this along with a, a spider coupler, you can get hollow couplers or solid couplers in the spiders. I'll probably get a hollow spider and that will take up any imperfections in my welding. If my welding is just, you know, if my welding is ten thousandths off on either side, it'll cause a wobble. And bearings, when everything's hard mounted in bearings, it doesn't like to wobble. So, if I put a hollow spider in there, that should take up any imperfections. Alright, so that's the plan right now. Bye. Okay, folks. Visual purposes only. This is what I had in mind. I could put that spider coupler right here. Now look, if I thought that I could weld this to this and get it trued up enough that it wouldn't vibrate like crazy, I'd go ahead and do that. But as I already explained, I think I might need that spider coupler for that. But, and keep in mind, these are very, very large pillow block bearings, and uh, I think they're that's a 5 8 shaft in there, and they're probably for an inch and 5 16 or something like that. And this is just an old motorcycle front sprocket. But, just for visual purposes, if I can build this back end like this and have it all trued up to where it doesn't vibrate, it does not matter what kind of motor I put in front of it. If you put these pillow block bearings close together and put whatever sprocket you're going to run between them, you could put, well, it's, it's, you could put as much horsepower through it as you could fit it under the seat. Because a 5 8 shaft supported that much is not going anywhere. So, um, I think it's time to start ordering parts and, uh, and get this thing put together for real. The only thing I don't like is with all that hardware under there, it's going to mean that the motor is going to have to sit further to the left. <sighs> But we'll cross that bridge when I get to it. All right, this is Chris from Key Farm. Love God, love people. That's all today on this project. I'm going to keep working on it, though. So check in. Check out part two.